Kristaps Porzingis going to miss the first two games. Pacers looking least, hot. Yeah. Tyrese Halliburton coming off that game with a with a choke jersey with the uh, the choke sweatshirt. Who's got the momentum? We'll ask a we'll ask a couple of guys coming up on the show. I'm excited. I'm excited, TJ, because we've got we're going to have a new champ. That's always exciting right. uh, when there's no repeat champ. It's also uh, guys that haven't won in a while. T- Tim Rolls have never won ever. Pacers I don't think have ever won. Uh, the Mavericks last won with Dirk. Yeah, that was over ten years ago, seven, right? Ten, and the Celtics, it's been like fifteen, sixteen years uh, since they've won a championship. And we got all these young superstars kind of gunning for their first title. Talk about Tatum and Halliburton and Luca. Kyrie hasn't won since uh, twenty sixteen. Uh, who am I missing? Oh, of course, Anthony Edwards, the man that's taken over the playoffs, and Cat. Uh, I'm really excited. I I think it's going to be a really fun conference championship on both sides. Uh, Wolves are slightly favored in the West. Celtics, massive favorites in the East. Uh, Can they finally get it done? Uh, I'm super jacked up. They're going to do something stupid. They're going to give away a game or two. Uh, I expect them to to reach the finals. And then who comes out of the West? It's going to be the great question. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great fun two weeks. By the way, I expect that to go seven. I really do. I think it's going to go seven. Pacers Celtics yeah, or, or I think or it's, I think Pacers Celtics go seven. Mm, you know, I, I was reading that. Howard Bryant from ESPN had a good line. He mentioned, um, let's see, they've backed up a, it's a dominant 64 win season with a trip to the Eastern Conference Finals for the third straight year. Something Boston hadn't done since Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, and Kevin McHale did it five years in a row. That's my Celtics childhood right there. Yeah. Right. I mean, so I still th- I, I looked at those numbers and I thought. God, I feel like the Celtics are in the news every year, but it's just been so long. And it feels like they're always right there. They're always right there. We'll ask Chris Russo whether Jason Tatum is the most under-respected or unrespected. Disrespected. Yeah, disrespected. Disrespect is real. I mean, Ivy League degree is really coming in handy this morning. Disrespected player of recent history. What are your thoughts, TJ? Well, I mean, more so, Brockman knows I can't talk about Tatum. I have this thing because the Sixers had the first pick his his year he was coming out. We traded the pick to Boston. We traded our pick to Boston. Danny we took Jedi Markel Mondrick, Fultz too. with number one. Tatum goes three. I said at the time that was a mistake that's going to haunt the Sixers for the next two, three decades, and it's proven to be right. So I just every time I'd see Jason Tatum do something, it just hurts my soul. But I got to ask you guys, the Celtics fans, this. Celtics have pretty much been on cruise control for the better part of this season, right? You jumped out. You had a huge lead. You've won both of your series four games to one. So the question is, like, when's the last time the Celtics really had any pressure on them to well, win a game? They haven't really played a meet. I mean, uh, I, obviously, all, obviously the playoff games were yeah, meaningful, right? But you know right? what I'm saying? Like, you, but, you had such a big lead. I mean, the last you, month, six weeks of the regular season, you they guys were, kind of were, like, playing around with lineups. Super, kind of super coasting. Coasting. You, you've been just crushing. I'm looking 4-1 against Miami, 4-1 oh. against the Cavs. Well, think about the two games that they lost to Miami and, and Cleveland. Those teams shot historically great that yeah. night. That, but the Heat had, what, 23 threes? It was the greatest three-point shooting night yeah, yeah. Yeah. of their franchise. And same thing with, with Cleveland. So my, my thing being, now you have the Pacers, right? It's a wake-up call, yeah. The Pacers had to scrap, man. They had to hold yeah. off the Sixers for the set, for the for their spot because the Sixers were coming, uh, bringing them down their necks. They've had to fight through every round of this playoffs. They're on kind of I'd say, yeah, I think it's safe to say they're on fire right now, right? They're, they're, they've been yeah. playing meaningful games. They're on a bit of a roll. They've got momentum. Are you worried as Celtics fans that because you guys have largely been coasting this whole year, now you're, you're playing a team that is rolling, is hungry, does have some momentum? Is that I don't like too much rest, TJ. Yeah, I don't rest, like too much rest. rest. I think rest leads to complacency. And I feel like when a team like Indiana comes off of a Game 7 win in Madison Square Garden with that momentum that they have, it makes them very dangerous and very angry. That's what and, I'm saying. Yeah. And I really feel strongly that as the, although the Celtics need the rest for Kristaps and they need him back and he still is going to be out, like we said, two more games – I get really nervous. I expect them to be slightly um, – I, I mean, they should be amped up coming into game one. It you is think? at home. It, they should. 
But aren't you kind of concerned sometimes? Oh, you get for a little, sure. get a little, a here, little here's, soft here's around the, the middle. Yeah, let me know if I'm off on that assessment. But now just... I've been watching this team uh, as constructed. Not really. I mean, with the two, with the Jays, you know, since 2018. Again, uh, famously, I'm at Game Seven and 18 against the Cavs, uh, where they have double-digit lead and they blow it because they can't hit a shot. Terry Rozier goes ice cold. They do a lot of dumb things in, in the playoffs. Jalen Brown can't make free throws. He can't dribble with his left hand. Turn Tatum, Tatum just takes fadeaways. Not aggressive. The dude can get any shot he wants at any point. He's a top five player in the league. Be honest with yourself, people. And I just want to see them just go nuts and just play well at home. They, they struggle at home in the playoffs. It's just really weird. And they do a lot of dumb stuff. And... I'm really worried. I'm really worried about playing a Pacer team that's got nothing to lose. Massive underdogs. Um, they take out the Knicks the way that they did. And, you know, everyone just saying, oh, this is the easiest path the Celtics have had. Uh, the easiest path of any team to make the finals in NBA history with Giannis out and Bede out and the Knicks go down. And there's just so much chatter up from above about how easy the path is and how if they don't win it they're just choke artists yeah. uh, 64 win season yeah boston, so just, boston just, was 17 games better than and beat three or four times indiana everybody we just need to sweep them and get it over with and go to the finals and be like okay who's coming they're not going to sweep though you think they're going to sweep there's no they chance should. They, sweep. They, they should they should but they should. i don't think they will there's there's so much better than indiana that this series shouldn't be close it's a 10 point favorite spread tonight all, this game should not be close. Also, Halliburton, I think he has his, if I'm not mistaken, his lowest points per game against any team is against the Celtics. Great. That <laughs> means he's going to have 40 tonight. You know, it's so funny because in so many ways, that's just an angry East Coast person talking. But there's also a reality to that. I just think oftentimes yeah. players like that come in and they play their best games when they're expected to play their worst. I mean, that's just, that's a little bit of Murphy's law. Right. And I think he, look, he's got this stage. This is what makes the two conference championships so interesting. All of these young guys who want to show I'm next, I got next, I want to be the face of the NBA. And I know that it's not like he's a rookie. It's not like he's Anthony Edwards where he's like a 22 year old fresh faced kid. But it'd be great if Tatum would be like, give look, him I'm give sick him of push. Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Like, I've been hearing about this guy for two weeks. Like, I I'm here. I've been first team all NBA twice. Uh, I'm the leader of the Boston Celtics. I've had 51 points in a game seven. Well, then you like, better win in four. I I'm going to show it tonight. Then it you better be win in four. It'd be great if that happened tonight. It, uh, whew, to say that I I'm expecting it, yeah, no chance. Don't be insane. You'll have a bucket between your legs. Are you kidding? At 5 <laughs> o'clock. I don't want to be anywhere near him. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.